Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and this video will be my revised tier list for Mortal Kombat 11. So about a month or a month and change ago, I did my first tier list for Mortal Kombat 11, and in that I said, hey, it was a bit early, but a lot of people were doing tier list season, a lot of people want to see tier list, so hey, we did tier list. And now I'm going to be going over this revised tier list, because a lot of characters' strengths and perceptions of strengths have gone up, or some have gone down, and we've learned a lot more about the cast in a pretty real way, I say. So not every character is going to be changing here, but uh, I want to give my thoughts on the characters as they stand, and uh, what we've learned about the characters and and moving up or down on the list. So first and foremost, here is the old list I had previously from about a month ago. And if you want to skip ahead to the end of the video, click wherever the timestamp is. I'm sure I put in a timestamp here, hopefully. Anyways, um, and you can just skip to the end of the list and see what the tier list is. So keep in mind with this being the old list here, uh, we're going to use that as our base and we're just going to start now and just work our way through the cast and discuss every single character and their potentials on the tier list. So you may have noticed I've compressed the tier list a little bit since last time. So we have S. These are going to be the best characters, bar none. A. These are going to be very strong characters, uh, very strong indeed, and absolutely can hang with the S characters. They maybe just are lacking just that little bit of special extra, you know, a little bit of mustard that gives them uh, the S characters the S tier rank they deserve. Uh, B. Solid mid tier. Ain't nothing uh, particularly stand out. Uh, obviously has strengths. Obviously has weaknesses. C tier. Things are starting to get a little worse. And D tier is. Well, let's just get real here. D tier is Kotokan tier. <laughs> um, for all the stuff we've learned in the months since last tier list, um, you know, a lot more perspective on a lot of characters, a lot more insight to a lot of characters, and for Kotokan, <laughs> uh, Kotal still sucks, and he's absolutely the worst character in the game. <laughs> I said that last time, and unfortunately, nothing about that has changed. Uh, you know, I made a whole video about it, right? Because uh, um, I dearly love this character and it hurts me a lot to see him be so poopy. Um, we'll leave any potential change wish list stuff. I already made that video. You can look at that video if you want. Um, needless to say, Kotalcon has... Well, he's got bad everything. Let's put it that way. His fastest as hit confirmable mid is 22 frames. Uh, he has, I guess, 4-2, the 22 frame mid I'm talking about, has good range, but it's nothing exceptional uh, compared to, like, just some of the other cast. Uh, it's not overwhelming in any way, shape, or form. He has all the issues of side switching during combos, uh, kind of low damage uh, on uh, anything without uh, burning bar, which then you have to side switch like crazy and lose all your momentum. And oh, just this and the other, Kotokan is just straight bad. Now, moving up one list here, uh, we did have Devora at sharing the bottom with him last time, and I'm actually going to move her up one bit. Uh, so she still has a litany of issues, to say the least, right? Uh, but we have now seen some play out of Devora, just like kind of open up you know, some of her potential, right? Uh, some of the stuff I've seen uh, is like, you know, sometimes it's super fake, honestly, and it just really takes advantage of the fact people don't know when they're allowed to press buttons against Devora. But still, on the old, and like, she's her stock's gone up, right? She still has... A whole bunch of issues uh, outside of like her DF2 crushing blow. Her damage is some of the lowest in the game and doesn't really make up for that, you know, pressure, right? Uh, but she definitely has gained ground since the last tearless video I made. Uh, we've seen some good examples of her pressure. Uh, watch Sonic Fox playing her. I'm sure you can Google it. Uh, he showed some really sassy stuff, some really fun stuff. But she still has a lot of the issues of, you know, F2 super slow, F1's also slow and it's a high, that kind of stuff. So she's still not great, but she's definitely gotten better with our knowledge that we've gained on the character. So moving to the top here, let's just make an obvious pick here. Let's just go up and I, I guess I don't have to talk about it, but to quickly talk about it, Amazing screen control. F4 is really stupid. The follow-up to F4 is really stupid and strong. Uh, <laughs> Acid is really stupid and strong. It, everything's really good. Uh, he has some of the best pokes in the game with the F3. That's really good. Scud Shot is amazingly powerful. Um, if you took away Scud Shot from the competitive variation, you actually might drop one tier. Because even though everything else is good, Scud Shot makes everything safe. And she's overwhelming for a lot of characters a lot of characters cannot deal with scud shot in a, an effective way so yeah that's aaron black really in a nutshell now with another top tier character i feel this character is the most off base i was uh mostly due to just lack of knowledge like i knew the general stuff she could do but uh last time around I had cassie as a solid mint tier, and no dude no way cassie is s tier capital s um 
Her damage output isn't the best on most of her starters. Some starters is very good, uh, but that's about the worst thing I can say about her. Her normals are pretty much best in class. Like her F4 is a giant range mid. That's nine frame startup, full hit confirm, uh, negative five on block. So you can OS uh, flawless block it if you want to. Check the video on that if you haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, like. So on top of her strengths, like once again, 4-4 four four is amazing, back 2 is amazing, like her footsie stuff is not in question. Her low gunshot is one of the best projectiles in the game, it's very safe at the range you want to use it at. It low profiles a lot of other projectiles, and she is a threat at every possible range is the best thing I can say. There is no range where Cassie isn't weak, and on top of that, you can end every single combo that launches into the nut shot, and just like Mortal Kombat X, if you nut shot someone in the air, it won't account for the landing frames. So it'll take like a frame land, frame land, land, and then have the usual. So you can actually usually get people to be uh, negative four or plus four for you on after the hit, meaning you effectively jail into four, four and a throw mix up. So you get your full combo, you're right in front of their face, you're plus four, they can't hit any buttons because four, four will beat any possible button they press, even the, the characters with the six frame jabs like Garrus and all that, they cannot press any buttons and they just have to accept that you're either going to F4 them or you can go for a throw attempt because you are in range for a throw. And yeah, what else can I say? Uh, the throw too also throws being 10 frames if you're not aware. So you being plus four comes in with a six frame differential. So like if they tech right, a hey, good awesome right, but they still have to guess attack and guess attack. Like it's ridiculous. So her damage is a little bit lower than average, I guess you could say, but uh, if you end any combo that way, it's always her turn. She gets all the damage and then you have to take the mix and the pressure afterwards on top of her everything else. She's great at uh, full screen. She's great up close. She's great at mid range. Cassie is the complete package. Now, moving back down just a little bit here. Uh, one person who's not really changed is Shao Kahn. I know there's been a lot of talk about the character. I've put a lot of time in the character myself. You know, I did the guide on him, right? Um, I've learned just about everything there is to learn about the character. And uh, if you know something I don't, hey, please tell me, right? And I've seen a lot of talk about, you know, where he is on the tier list and all that. And I stand firmly by he's bad. Uh, his damage is all right, but everything's really bad and slow. Yes, you can hit confirm the F3. But you can only hit confirm the F3 in a real fight if your reaction time is like basically top 2%. Uh, I can do it in training mode all the time, but that's training mode. Training mode, there's no stressors, there's no variables, there's no this, that, or the other, right? In a real match, hit confirm the F3 solo, I can't do it. <laughs> Maybe if your reaction time is better than me, hey, all power to you, right? But I can't do it in a real match, reliably. And if it ain't reliable, chuck it in the garbage as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's got some fun stuff, you know, 4-4 four, four being plus is cool, 4-4 four, four being plus is a little bit of whatever, because you can uh, flawless block it in a very obvious gap. Um, he has a litany of issues, obviously Spears, like, oh my god, one of the worst projectiles in the game. Um, you still can't safely get any buff, like some people were trying to say you can spear from full screen, get Dark Priest buff off. No, you can't. You literally can't. You only can if they let you. Like, maybe, I don't know, Jax couldn't get you, I guess. If you got them from a full spear, uh, full screen spear, right? Most of the casts can still stop you from getting your Dark Priest buff even after a spear because it's just that slow, let alone the taunts, which are even slower, right? Uh, up Hammer is basically a busted move because it doesn't work once people know what's up with it. Um, yeah, just he's really bad. There, I've seen so many people try to talk about him in different ways, and they're all basically, they don't take in the whole picture into account, they're just hyper-focusing on one thing, or they're straight up just ignorant to how it actually works. So yeah, Shao, Shao Kahn, I love him, he sucks. Now here's one I'm going to really go against the grain against a lot of people, and this one is actually not even changed. So Collector, a lot of people are saying Collector is like here, and I got more experience with Collector than any other character. And a lot of people I find that talk bad about Collector, they don't know much about him, so kind of like a reverse Shao Kahn situation here. I'm going to say he's still mid-tier. Um, he ain't great. Now, I'll say it, I'll be the first one with that. You know, like, I've played him more than any other character. He ain't great, right? But a lot of people talk about him, don't even talk about the <laughs> the actual good competitive variation. Everyone's focused on the uh, back-in-the-pack variation, which is the one with the command grab. And I think the spare change, the one with the grenades and the DOTs is wildly better in just about every way. 
Uh, it gives them full control across the screen, no matter where it's on screen at any given time. You have to yeah, deal with the DOTs. Uh, some characters can punish them even for full screen for doing it, which sucks, right? Uh, but still, that's not every character. So a lot of characters, he basically forces you to react. Anytime he gets a knockdown uh, against most of the cast, if they don't have a very quick advancing move, you can just chuck it on their knockdown and they have to deal with that, right? The grenades are barely negative up close, let alone full screen. They cover a massive arc that's basically impossible to jump over. If you chuck him while you're jumping, he stays like in air. So, like, if you jump over fireball, check your own, you're not going to land on top of the fireball. He'll just stay there during the whole duration. And he straight up out zones a lot of classic zoners, like uh, Katana, which we'll talk about later on. Katana, he owns Katana in the zoning fight. She can't fan him. He can jump over sand, throw grenades all day, and she has to take the, the chip damage, and he doesn't have to take a damn thing. Anyone who wants to throw fireballs, you bola them, you trade. And when you trade on a bola, he doesn't do the second part of his animation where you're like, does the blue fire, right? So it's effectively the EX bola hit for free, right? At which point, after the trade, you toss your DOT and you throw another grenade and they have to just sit there and eat it all. Like, that's legit what he can do that other characters can't do. Like, when it comes to a pure zoning fight, uh, the spare change variation basically outzones everybody. Uh, <laughs> Like a lot of people can't deal with like I like straight up like uh, Garrus, which we'll get to Garrus and yeah, Garrus is really good by the way. Uh, a lot of people like the Infinite Warden version of Garrus, right? Uh, I personally like Noir more because it has a command grab, but I understand why because uh, you know, Infinite Warden strength is a lot more obvious, right? Uh, I think Collector straight up beats Garrus Infinite Warden because Garrus can't deal with the fireballs. On top of the fact that um, since he never has to really touch the ground while throwing fireballs. Um, you have really good normal stand four has a lot of range uh four two has a lot of range i know everyone focuses on four one two and that's the whole thing and yes it misses bola whatever it doesn't matter you should be using four two at that range anyways uh down four is really good just to run a hitbox um he's just got good normals and like i'm obviously not talking him up to like talk him up to here right but i'm talking him up to that he isn't here uh he's got a pretty okay suite of stuff to work with there's obviously a lot of issues with him uh he does have the hitbox issues we talked about earlier his damage is definitely on the lower end um a lot of times his moves are a little bit slower for what they do and there's a couple of moves that are basically punishable on blocks like strings wise that shouldn't be uh but overall he's he's all right like he certainly isn't the best otherwise i would put him there but he certainly isn't down here like, as someone who's put a lot of time into the cons and all that kind of stuff, Collector is definitely better than them. Now, quickly, just to fill out some upper mid stuff, two characters that don't need too, too, too much explanation uh, as far as upper mid goes, and that is Liu Kang and Baraka. So they're both just really good at what they want to do. Maybe not top tier. Baraka, the whole thing with him is damage is basically best in class outside of super edge case situations, right? Um, and he has a really good... I know everything, you know, forward four, four is really good for, you know, just basic neutral pressure. Back four is one of the better sweeps in the game. Uh, unfortunately, some of his better stuff has gaps in it, like, you know, uh, one, one, two and all that, right? Uh, but he has a lot of easy plus frames, even if it is only plus one. Uh, but yeah, just he's super straightforward and good. Like, the only thing is he's almost a little too basic, which kind of hurts him from being good instead of being, you know, great. Uh, but other than that, yeah, Baraka just kind of does it all and does it pretty good. And once again, damage is very easy and comes freely to Baraka. Liu Kang, uh, stagger pressure is amazing. Uh, the parry actually wound up being really good in this game. I thought the parries might be like a little bit gimmicky and maybe for a lot of other characters it is because theirs is just not as good as Liu Kang's. Uh, cause you know, he launches and let alone the whole, you know, crushing blow and wake up where you're going to lose half your life. Right. Uh, his fireball game is really good. Uh, flying kicks, a very handy move to have. Um, F4 is oh, F4 and all the very pressure. If you want to do F4, if you want to do F4, three, if you want to do F4, three up three, like all the pressure from that's really good. Liu Kang's just a solid all rounder. Now let's talk about someone who's going down the tier list here. So let's talk about Kano. So Kano, I never had him that high to begin with. Kano has a lot of obvious faults. Uh, um, the fact that if he wants to get any damage, he has a side switch, you know, which is uh, another issue with another guy over here. And uh, just, you know, some of his moves are slow. He's very dependent on highs. Um, and a lot of his mid stuff is very unsafe. Like back two is not safe at all. Uh, he relies too much on jailing down one into whatever. But the thing is the recent bug fix patch actually screwed him over really bad and screwed over a couple of characters who are not that great, really bad too. And we'll talk about that later. But um, so if you say go for a command grab, right? His command grab is a high 
Not a mid like some of the other characters, right? His command grab is a high, so you're allowed to neutral duck it, right? So if you miss your command grab, you can get uppercut it now into a crushing blow. And yes, it's a bug fix, but it's basically still a strict nerf to the character. So uh, he's one of the characters that really wants to go for tick throw setups. Um, a lot of the characters have mid command throws. Honestly, tick throws aren't that big of a deal. Uh, but since um, the tick throw basically forces people to block and crouch and all that kind of stuff, uh, he wants to go for it, but now if you screw up and get the hit and you go with your uh, command grab, because uh, it also has quite a bit of recovery, basically you're 50 50 in yourself almost in a way. So if you get it, awesome. You burn a bar, you'll get your 18%, right? But if you screw up, you actually get the hit and you get your command grab and whiffs, they uppercut you and then you take 400 damage instead. And that's not weighted in your favor, right? Because, uh, you know, when you start your tech throw, you don't know if they're going to block it or not. You're just kind of hoping they will, right? Uh, and that makes an already bad character worse on top of just all the other issues he has. Moving back up the tier list a little bit here, let's talk about Scarlet and Sub-Zero. So Sub-Zero is a character I already had high up, and once again, I don't need to belabor the points too much. His strengths are obvious. He's got a lot going on for him. He's got really good normals. Uh, he's got four forwards, very easy plus frames. Uh, his damage potential is all right, I guess. That's probably the biggest thing I'm hurt, uh, holding him back. He has a lot of 50 50 stuff, especially if you pick the other variation. Let's do 50 50 into true combo. Uh, slides, still slide. It's really good. Uh, <laughs> he's got a lot going on for him, and especially uh, just because the whole toolbox works the way it does. I mean, he's just dang good. There's nothing really to argue with. He's just dang good. Uh, Scarlet, I had her a little bit lower. I had her just solid mid-tier before. I'm going to move her up because Scarlet has everything she needs to win. There's nothing broken about her, which is why she's not S-tier, but her basic damage is higher than average. Uh, her projectile suite is obviously among the best in the game, right? Uh, any string in the tongue is basically safe, and she's just really good. Like, um, a lot of people, I feel, uh, especially like earlier on in the, the game's life, uh, kind of cooled on her just because we all had our fill of her in the beta, right? And we all had different conceptions of stuff because there wasn't as many characters, that kind of stuff, you know, this, that, and the other. Uh, but now, as things are solidifying, I still find she's not very popular. Mostly because, once again, people got her fill of her in the beta, right? Uh, but she's got everything she needs. Her footsies are really good. Uh, her general string structure is really good. The fireballs are great. Um, the damage, if you just get a 2-1-2 starter, and it's very easy to hit confirm, just 2-1, hit 2, so you can keep it safe on block. She just got it all, basically. Uh, the only thing I guess I can knock her for is, um, there's a lot of characters that can really screw over heavy zoning, and like, even a character like Braca, right? is not a zoner, but his basic fireball is so proficient that you can actually just kind of steal the momentum from a lot of zone-based characters. And the more she wants to do that, the more she's going to suffer. And uh, there's just a lot of anti-zoning in this game. Like, you know, if, like right beside her, Sub-Zero, right? You don't want to trade with Sub-Zero. You get your fireball in, you get like your 7, 8, 9%, whatever, and you get frozen, you're losing the trade. Big time, right? Uh, so a purely zone-based game generally only tends to work on, honestly, kind of the worst characters. Uh, but still, it doesn't take away from her tool set, and she has a really good one. All right, now going back to mid tier. So let's get two guys here. Uh, one of them is going up, one of them is going down. So Cetrion and Noob. So early perception of Cetrion was honestly like down here almost, right? Like a lot of people consider Cetrion among the worst in the game. And I feel that's definitely been a knocked away that perception quite a bit, right? Uh, especially if you've seen Dragon play her any amount. She still has some issues. Uh, when it comes to kind of safe neutral pressure, she struggles, right? Like she has her forward two string, which is really good, except it's unsafe on block. And yes, you can cancel the EX rock, except that's got a gap and you get a full punish without even having to do up two. You can just literally false block and punch back, right? So she has to kind of take some risks on multiple levels when she's trying to compete in like a more footsies based environment. Her zoning obviously is best in class, right? You don't have to worry about that. Rock does more damage than average, has a lot of pushback. You have to worry about the threat of the air rock. The uh, laser is very strong, has a lot of pushback as well, on block or not, right? So her fireball game is very good. Uh, the issue just is she still struggles a little bit on like just kind of basic buttons and stuff. Uh, and you have to play a little bit of a guessing game, right? Now, you can easily circumvent people's expectations. Like if they're just waiting, oh, I'm going to block uh, rock, then floss block the EX version and get my punish. And then she just ends her string and doesn't do anything, right? Then that's going to mentally take you aback. And then she got away with it for free. Those are kind of things where you have to play like a multi-layered game. But other than that, yeah, she's 
Definitely better than people thought. Still has issues, but better than people thought. Uh, now, Noob Cybot. So, Noob, definitely people thought he was a lot stronger uh, earlier on. And now a lot of his faults are coming to light. Like, uh, I even talked about in the last uh, video how a lot of characters could uh, punish uh, some of his best footsie strings. And as time has gone on, it turns out more and more and more and more characters can punish it pretty easily sometimes. Sometimes it's range specific, right? Uh, but he's generally got to take a fairly big risk once uh, the footsies start happening. And his uh, projectile game is like, it's not a keep away game, right? Like it's not an issue to jump over a stuff or advance on him. Like that's not the issue. You can literally walk and block your way in. There's not much you can do about it. Um, so he still does a lot of damage. If you know some of the more optimal combos, he can get like big time, like close to bracket level damage on a lot of stuff. Sometimes more than bracket, depending on the combo, right? Uh, but with a lot of his strengths like that, he has more than a few faults and those faults are coming more and more clear as people learn the matchup. So yeah, we're gonna have to drop him down. Now, another one I was wrong about, but honestly, I'm not gonna feel too bad because pretty much everybody was wrong about, uh, was Kung Lao. Now we're only putting Kung Lao in mid. He still has a bevy of issues. Uh, not the least of which basically every string except for a handful like forward four, back three, two, forward one, two, uh, they're all unsafe on block, right? Um, pretty much anything that's not one of those strings is not safe on block. But uh, we definitely seen a lot more stuff out of him. A lot of people thought the opening hat variation was the way to go. Turns out, nope, uh, Z hat's definitely the way to go. Z hat's a very weird and awkward move that has a lot of strength to it. Not the least of which, uh, when you meter burn it, you can basically recover while the projectile's still happening. You can dash forward if they block. If they get hit, hey, whatever, full combo, right? But if they block, then you can start applying pressure. You know, we can go through a throw mix. You can, you know, just hit more buttons. You can try to hop them or low them, whatever you want to do, right? Uh, so a lot of him rising up the tier list has to do on the strength of Z hat. His teleport game is definitely not the strongest it's ever been. Let's you know, be honest with it, right? Uh, it's definitely not MK9 Lao. His uh, hat projectile is <laughs> not very good. Uh, but on Z hat alone, plus some, a couple other little things, Z, uh, but Z hat's one of the big ones. Now people are starting to learn how to apply correctly. Yeah, he's definitely moving up. And now that we're learning, you know, to use some of the more safe pressure versus the yellow stuff, and you know, don't pay mind to all those online people just jump back dive kick all day. Uh, but you know, proper usage of you know four four back three two all that kind of stuff. Yeah, he's definitely rising up the tier list. Moving back up the tier list here. Let's just well, let's just get these one out of the way. So I got to talk about it. Like really, like, I've seen some people knock him down just one, but realistically. Garrus does everything he needs to do. There's no part of the screen, barring a very few specific matchups, where he doesn't feel mostly in control. Uh, he does it all, right? Um, a lot of people are starting to finally get some use out of the new error variation, which I'm a big fan of. It's been the one I preferred from the start, mostly because it's the best command grab in the game, and by a mile! Oh my lord, it's so much better than every other command grab in the game. Uh, but Infinite Warden, big damage, easy stuff, can't zone him for the most part. All right, and it's a couple matchups like we talked about earlier. Um, and now people are starting to get more hang on new air. It just Garrus is the total package. Um, now, one thing I'm just going to do a little switcheroo on here from my last tier list. So before I had Sonia down here, Scorpion up here, I'm just going to switch him. So I've seen a lot more safe plays out of Sonya, uh, a viable safe play out of Sonya, and uh, less gimmicky stuff, and a lot more on the Zonia stuff. I remember when I made the uh, how to choose a main character thing, and I put her in the zoner section. People were like, "No way, Sonya's not a zoner." Yeah, Sonya is definitely a zoner on top of everything else. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Sony strengths, stupid high damage, all the mix, all the zone stuff. Um, what else to say? Scorpion, I feel he dropped down, not really through any fault of his own. It's just a lot of the other characters, uh, strengths up high are a lot more pronounced than his. And that's really the only other reason I'm dropping him. Uh, not, not to say he's obviously bad because he's in good company here, right? Uh, but, um, his game's almost a little too honest compared to the actual superstars here. Now, two people we're going to put back down here, and uh, they're where they belong last time, and I wish I could put them up higher, but Raiden and Frost. These are two characters I like quite a bit. Um, the issue is, once again, the tool sets are good. The numbers are awful. Um, like, Frost has a 16-frame mid-hit confirm. Keep in mind, Cassie has a 9-frame mid-hit confirm, right? 
also has more range too by the way and like just a lot of the disparity between her and a lot of the cast the tools are there she has what she needs to win if you don't count the frame data but when you add the frame data and things are way slower than they should be things are more negative than they should be um four two is now uh crushing blowable on a whiff which is a bug fix yes but it still hurts her um she has a lot of weird uh hurt box hit box bug interactions like her back one two is not safe on block even though it should be but you can do back one two two to do another extension to make it safe except when you do that it literally goes over cassie's head and she gets a full punish for trying it which it shouldn't work that way but hey uh but yeah once again great tool set bad frames raiden once again good tool set bad frames both of these characters are only a couple tweaks away from the numbers perspective you tweak the numbers and they go up to tier list but everything's slow and bad or slow and punishable or just bad and just, it just needs to be better it sucks that i gotta put them down here i you know i put a lot of time in the frost myself uh and pfft, yeah not very good so to fill out some of the rest of it's here here so we're going to put in Katana, we're going to put in Johnny Cage, and we're going to put in Jade. Yes, Jade. Jade is not down here. So quickly, Katana. Yeah, I think it's mostly self-explanatory. Her tool set's really good. It's just really bland. Uh, her neutral's pretty good. Not great. Uh, her damage is pretty good. Actually, it's not even really good. Actually, it's a bit below average, honestly. And if you want to get the good damage, then you got to switch sides uh, with the crushing blow requirement. Uh, fan spam's annoying. It always has been, always will be and is not as deadly as it was in previous games uh she plays a really honest game and and any fighting game if you're not aware honest is the code word for bad and <laughs> we're just trying to you know dress it up and make it nice for you right uh but yeah uh she's got a lot of tools to compete she's not awful but she's not great johnny once again to good fireball better than average fireball great normals serviceable below average damage awful crushing blows uh, he's not wretched like the characters below him, right? He definitely is better off than those guys. Uh, but he certainly doesn't belong any higher. Now, Jade, Jade, this character I want to talk about a little bit. Uh, Jade fans are very opinionated, and God bless you for it. I love the character loyalty. Uh, and I find a little bit uh, downplay on Jade. Now, Jade has issues. I'll be the first to admit it. Jade has issues, but she's got a lot of good strengths too, right? Like, back 343 three is a very fast 11 frame mid. Uh, three hits to hit confirm off of, so that's really good. Um, you can do a combo into like a restand that's very plus and you're in their face. So that's a whole thing. Um, that's really strong. You can like, you know, go for another three, four, three or try to go for throw attempt or something like that. Uh, you can also make that string plus on block if you want to. Yes, there's a flawless block, but you know, then that's a whole mind game where you can like fall, uh, try to throw them and all that, whatever. Right. But she's got a lot of tools. Her zoning is really good. It's basically impossible to zone her because of the glow. Um, her normals are good although some are a bit unsafe yes we all know uh but still overall i gotta say she's a pretty good package a lot of people have been playing her at a high level and definitely been showing her worth she still struggles she still has some issues yes uh but just on the strength of her strengths i feel i gotta put her mid tier so cabal cabal i struggle this is one i feel he's like if I could just put a tier in between these two tiers, he'd be like the occupant of it, right? Uh, he's got a lot. Like, Cabal's got it going on, right? Um, the only thing is, I'm just going to drop him here. And the only reason I'm dropping him here is because when I compare him to Sonya, Garrus, Cassie, and Aaron, I feel he doesn't stack up. Um, he's got everything. He's competitive at every range. Uh, the only things that are knocking on him is his damage outside of crushing blows is a little bit lower than average. And uh, if you're getting c closer to average damage, then he's usually getting like a punish or something like that, right? And he just doesn't have the grime. He's pretty much just an honest. He's, he's, he's like Baraka. Like, yes, I guess if you pick uh, the one competitive variation, you have ghetto 50 50s, uh, but most of them are pretty okay to fuzzy block. Um. And the damage reward is not very much. Uh, he's got it going on. He really does. It's just he doesn't have the real greasiness or like one exceptional strength to make him S tier, in my opinion. And that leaves us with our final two characters. Uh, so I definitely misjudged more one than the other because I both had him as mid tier uh, on the first list, right? And let's just say certain events have definitely shown Jackie to be up here. <laughs> um, Jackie's damage is off the charts, especially in the corner. 
Uh, her pressure is amazing. The fake out pressure, the fact that she has like the double throw, uh, shim sham shadu, I can counter your throw and throw you back, right? That's really good. Um, the only thing I can falter for is her full screen presence is like not existent, right? And her neutrals may be a little bad, but it's better than people think. Like, uh, back three's got more range than people give it credit for. Uh, and, uh, her back two neutral string is also really good. Um, it just, Maybe the hurt boxes aren't the best because it's a little bit easier to stuff her against like some of the more like heavily neutral based characters, right? They can have an easier chance of stuffing her. Uh, but her neutral presence isn't bad. And once again, she's just an up close dynamo with all the fake outs, all the damage. Uh, like stuff like her 4 3 string is basically like not negative on block. <laughs> it might as well not be, right? Um, it's so like it's only negative two, right? Um, so. Like, that's not a deterrent at all. Like, you're not going to feel the pressure really to, like, oh, I got to stand still and take my turn, right? Um, it's really, really strong and just, yeah. So, full screen bad, mid screen, it's all right, right? Close screen, just a complete dynamo that kind of poops on a lot of the characters. Uh, so, yeah, if you haven't seen Sonic Fox play Jackie or some other really strong Jackie players, I suggest you check it out if you don't understand why she's top tier. Uh, but, yeah, she's really good. And old man Jacksimillion, I'm just going to put him here. He's really basic, and I don't mean that in like a bad or derogatory way. He's really basic, but basic, once well, I've said this a million times, I'll say it a million more. Basic is never a bad thing. His game plan, while basic, is effective and good. The more you heat up, the better. The 50 50 opportunities are really strong. The grab is crazy. Uh, the 50 50 opportunities, only one option is not safe. So you can kind of go from there. Yeah, there's a couple of S's and all that stuff, but like in the realistic heart of the match, you have so little time to react that it's not that big of a deal and if you can't hate god bless you for having like superhuman reaction time right um but yeah he's just got a lot of strengths going for him the more he heats up the less you can ignore him from full screen because uh the heat up the arm missiles are actually really good they're better than you most people give him credit for and just yeah he's good and when he gets going man he's just a freight train and so that is my finished and complete revised tier list as with all tier lists yes they are fully and completely opinion based so you are more than free to agree or disagree uh, with what I have to say and what I have to offer here. Just don't lose your mind over it, please. Don't be that guy, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, please post in the comments below where you think you know uh, your own tier lists are. You know where you think this shapes up. Uh, the one thing you know, if you're clicking ahead uh, and you're like, oh, how does he have this character there? Maybe you're wind back and see where I talk about them <laughs> before you freak out uh, but yeah so that's where I uh, have my new revised tier list so some people have had some big changes or some big gains uh, some people you know like poor old Kano definitely dropped out uh, but it's not too wildly different than my old tier list I would definitely say you no know, certain characters like Cassie just uh, I had and I feel like a lot of people at large just kind of had no idea like DR gross like definitely opened up to a lot of people's eyes how Cassie works right uh, and then stuff like you know Oliver uh, just like post combo pressure is really good and like all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of people's eyes have been open to Jackie. People like, you know, Aaron, Gareth, Sonya are still really strong and everyone knows it. People like, you know, Squ uh, Cabal, Sub Zero, they're still really good. And people like Kodokan are still. Yeah. But, anyways, that is it for this video. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has found you well. Go and play some Mortal Kombat.